I'm with Dr. Jonathan Wright, and I would consider Dr. Wright one of the pioneers, the grandfathers, of, if you will, of bioidentical hormones. You told a wonderful story for the medical doctors at this conference, and you shared with them how a woman came to see you, and you were about to prescribe an estrogen therapy, and somehow she became perplexed, saying, saying that somehow it was a horse derivative, urine mm -hmm. of some sort, and she said, I'm not a horse. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that story. Oh, my. Um, that's exactly what she said in response to writing out of a prescription. She, I think she was a teacher, and she could read upside down. Right? <laughs> so uh, I was writing out a prescription for Premarin. Now, this was 1981, 82, like that. And she knew from reading the original book uh, that came out on it in the 1960s, that this is a concentrate of estrogen from horse urine. Mm. Um, and even though millions of women had been swallowing concentrates of horse urine, she didn't want to. And she says, well, I thought that you did natural medicine. And I said, well, uh, yeah, horses are natural, you know. And that's when she says I'm the, she's not a horse. Yeah, uh, wow. Or asked me if, if she looked like a horse, actually. And I knew better than to answer that in any way. <laughs> Whatever I said might be wrong. Right. So I didn't. And then uh, we talked about it some more, and she told me, I want in my body what I had there was there when I was 33, or whatever, way prior to menopause. I had to tell her that there was only one of those hormones that was presently available on the market. Mm -hmm. And at that point, she says, well, why don't you look into that, and I'll be back in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I called a number of compounding pharmacies. Uh, there weren't near as many in the early 1980s as there are now. Mm -hmm. None of them in the United States could do it. Wow. I don't know why. Got hold of Ed Thorpe, and that's a name to remember because he's the man who sourced all the materials back then. He was in Vancouver, British Columbia at Cripps Pharmacy, and very fortunately, sadly, not all that far from Vancouver. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he sourced it so we could put together a comprehensive program including several important estrogen metabolites, progesterone, DHEA, testosterone, all the different things that are wow. in um, so-called modern bioidentical hormone replacement. Now, having said that, uh, you are overly generous in calling me a pioneer, sir, because you'll find documentation in a book called Science and Technology in China. Um, 3,000 years ago. No, no, not quite. Not quite. But that was the year 1050. 1050. There's where the pioneers are in the year 1050. Yes. And they did, just like those horse hormone people did, they concentrated the hormones. From humans. From humans. Wow. Now that makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. Now they were from urine, but please don't object if you've been swallowing horse hormone urine. Now, come on. Um, switching over to human urine hormones is safer, and that's what they did. And that was done and documented by Joseph Needham in his book from the year 1050 all the way through the 1800s. They concentrated them from urine, and they contain things that are not in modern bioidentical hormone therapy today wow. because a young human body is just full of not just sex steroids, but all the hormones that there are. And that we can't get in any of the programs. So, as I think I mentioned during the meeting, Anybody out there uh, working with public schools and you want to make a lot of money for your public school? Just reprom the restrooms. <laughs> so in at Tahoma school. Clinic, you're yeah. suggesting mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the ultimate hormone replacement would be to take from young, healthy humans, boys and girls, and then hopefully separate the boys' urine to from Not the female. Just hopefully, they got the men's room over here. Anyway. Right, right. right. Well, mm -hmm. that's yeah. perfectly already done. And then <laughs> you filter out all the pot and all the speed. It's high school. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh and you purify it, and you know some people might give that up because they know it's gonna to go to grandma. <laughs> they might give up those things, and they can make a lot of money. Look or maybe much. they'll have the pure urinal and the not so pure <laughs> one. <laughs> there you go. But, but it has EPO, erythropoietin, oh, it listen. has hormones that maybe we haven't even identified in porch yet. In fact, there was a new hormone identified in 2006. Look at what we've identified. Yeah. It's, got to do with liver regulating iron and we didn't know it existed. Wow. So we actually would do a better job, folks, if we went the high school route. Now, there's a lot of precedent for that. It goes back to 1050. But there's recent precedent from, excuse me, 
but I graduated from Harvard, so I get to say Harvard, uh -huh. where, and by the way, also UCSF did it, and Howard Hughes Medical Institute, yeah. what did they do? They worked with young mice, and old mice, and they drew blood from the young mice, this wasn't urine, this was blood, uh -huh. and they separated the serum, which is the part without all the blood cells and everything, uh, and they took that serum, and they injected it into the old mice, and oh my goodness, the old guy mice started chasing the old lady mice again, and not only that, but remember, these are mice in science, they biopsied their mouse brains, mm -hmm. and they found a significant improvement in regeneration of brain with just serum from a younger mouse, and the same thing with muscle. They biopsied muscle, and the serum from there into the older mouse, and the older mouse developed better muscles. Wow. And with better muscles and better brains, one of the things they can do is chase the lady mice more. Right. Mm -hmm. That's just only one of the things they can do, though. So this whole business of rejuvenation has been around for over a thousand years that we know about. Who knows what was happening in Atlantis? I don't know if it existed, but if it did, it probably did this too. Um, but it's now coming out as a brand new modern thing to take stuff from younger ones and put it into older ones. You know, you can make a whole industry, industry of this. A person could well, work their way through college by donating serum to put into older people. Mm -hmm. So would you have, you'd be able to remove the issue of tissue, blood matching, rejection issues would, I mean, just by separating the red cells and everything and just leaving the serum, there you is no tissue rejection issue whatsoever, right? That's right. You just have to be careful. Obviously, you'd have to be careful that the serum didn't contain a hepatitis virus and yeah. other things you don't want to give to that person. But blood banks screen for that. There are screening procedures to do that. With whole blood, you should be able to do a serum. So I'm just waiting for the first serum bank to come up. Yeah. So there is history where they took the pineal gland of, of a young mouse and put it in an old mouse, and the old mouse reju rejuvenated and became young. Is, is that true? Yes, and that was pioneered by Dr. Paul Nihans in Switzerland, wow. who took fetal animal cells. Yes, yes. And fetal animal cells, of course, are not rejected because they're fetal. They're not rejected by mom, and oddly enough, they're not rejected by humans either, but if you use animal cells for after those animals are born, yes, you get into a rejection phenomenon. So anyway, he took fetal animal cells. His most famous case is a woman who had a giant goiter. They were up in the Swiss Alps, no iodine, and so a lot of people had goiters. And if they got very big, they would literally impede your breathing. So that's why they had to remove the goiter. But apparently, only the male brothers were capable of removing the goiter without removing the parathyroid glands too. And by the way, that's why it got the Mayo Clinic started, because everybody from all over the Midwest, which was known as the goiter belt at that time, knew that if they went to the Mayo Brothers for their goiter surgery, they never died of having their parathyroid glands removed too. Right. Okay, so that's the hazard. She came to Dr. Nihon's office having had her thyroid removed, but also the parathyroids with it. She's in Switzerland, she's nowhere near Minnesota. Um, and when that happens, your blood calcium drops, drops, drops. It drops way low, and you can't control your muscles, and you go into these spasms like this, and that lasts for about three to four weeks, and maybe six weeks is the longest, and you die, which is why it's so important to go see the male brothers at that time. You don't want to die of that surgery. Right. So if this woman is going to die in a couple, three weeks, what's Dr. Nihans do? Well, it's a small enough city that he's the doctor, he is the veterinarian, he is the coroner, he does all the health stuff for this city. So he somehow knows where there's a pregnant sheep, and he takes it on down to the abattoir, which is, this is the French part of Switzerland, the slaughterhouse. First he dissects out the fetal sheep, then he dissects out the fetal parathyroid glands, which is really, really going well because they're so small. Takes them, mushes them up a little bit so he can put them in a syringe, injects them, the woman stopped spasming in two days. Her serum calcium rose to normal, and she lived from age 53 to age 80-something nice. with one injection because these are whole cells, which means they have a cell wall mem membrane, even though it's not rejected. Mm -hmm. So those can get in there, and they can implant themselves and act as a parathyroid gland. Wow. Now, Nihon's expanded that from there to giving people who 
were of short stature when the rest of their family was a lot taller, but they were 22, 23. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, excuse me, the women didn't have breasts, the guys didn't grow hair, all that kind of stuff. What did he do? He took pituitary cells from fetal, he was working with sheep, from fetal sheep, he took pituitary cells, injected them into those people, wow. and doggone, they'd grow three or four inches, and the ladies would blossom as ladies do, and the guys would get mm, aggressive as guys do, mm -hmm. yeah, with the fetal pituitary cells. By the time his career was over, there were several clinics, one of his and of other doctors in Switzerland, who were doing this thing called cell therapy, which is very different from stem cell therapy. That's a different story. This is the actual cells themselves, not the stem cells. Now, if I can continue for a little bit, mm -hmm. that's the best. However, you gotta go to Switzerland because they have to have the animal in the room right next oh. to you because the cells have to be alive, you know? Yes. And you can't transport the alive cells halfway around the world and have them okay. Okay. All right, so you gotta go to Switzerland. The second best Mm -hmm. is presently still available. We've been doing it at the clinic since 1992. I'm sorry, 1993, when the law changed. And what the law says is, well, we can do these things, shh, as long as we don't advertise and we don't tell anybody what it's for and we don't make any claims. You know how that goes? Uh, right. Yeah. So, in other words, as long as you don't tell anybody what you're doing, you can do it. It's Got remarkable. It. Yes. But that's the law. Yes. Because otherwise you need approval by people who approve things. And according to Forbes magazine, no kidding, Forbes Magazine, 2012, it costs $1.2 billion to get an approval. $1.2 billion? Who's got that kind of money? Right. Especially if you can't patent what you're doing. Right. Okay. So anyway, the second best thing, which we can do, uh, but we just can't make any advertisements about it, and I can tell you about it, mm -hmm. and your listening audience, if they were interested. Sure. Um, what's done there is the contents of the cells because those contain all the fetal growth and rejuvenation factors. Okay. And they take the contents of those cells and put them in little vials, mm -hmm. and you can either swallow the stuff, or if you're a physician, you can inject the stuff. It works better when it's injected because it's, part of it's broken down by the digestive process. Mm -hmm. um, the folks we've treated the most who had certain problems with that happen to be people with weak adrenal glands. Um, oh. And unfortunately, it's mostly women. That's just the way nature is. Many more women get weak adrenal glands than men. Um, and we followed along not only on how do you feel and what are your symptoms, but with laboratory tests that show how much cortisone and cortisol and other hormones are being made by their adrenal glands. And with the use of the cell contents, which I would call the B grade and A grade is getting the cell itself, okay? Mm -hmm. But with the use of the, the cell contents, um, people have come along a lot more quickly on recovery from weak adrenal glands. Now, certainly, that's not the only thing to do. There are a group of vitamins that are really supportive for the adrenals. There are botanicals that are really supportive for the adrenals. And a lot of times, we can work with just those things, and they do the job, and we don't need to have these cell content vials sent over from Switzerland for that particular person. Mm -hmm. But there are people who just can't get better without that cell therapy, and it can be applied for any organ in the body. Weak heart gets better with heart. Weak liver gets better with liver. It also... And the I'll Greeks knew about this. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I'll, I'll shut up in a second, or maybe, maybe 120 seconds, sorry. Uh, it also can be used as an overall rejuvenation program. Wow. People who particularly are past 65 and for sure past 80, you can see the difference if they have just a little bit of the cell contents preparation for muscle, for brain cells, for liver, for heart, for spleen, and all that sort of thing. And the ladies particularly like the skin cells mm -hmm. because you can do the same kind of injection you do with collagen and Botox and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. The Botox, of course, is a paralyzer, and the collagen and the hyaluronic acid, those are taken away by one's own tissues. But this stuff, the skin cells, are rejuvenated. Wow. And you actually get a better looking complexion because you put in these very youthful, it's from, these days it's fetal sheep and fetal rabbits. Mm -hmm. uh, you put in the contents of the skin cells and that's taken up by your own skin cells and things look better. But you can also do this on your whole body. Now, turns out that Dr. Nihans wrote a book, I'm winding down, and he said, probably the people will need this every three to four years. Mm -hmm. And he was right, he did it for 50 years. And after three, four years, people will come back and say, I think my adrenals are getting weak again. Let's do it over again. 
Yeah. Uh, or they'll say, I just want this rejuvenation thing over. I feel like I did before I had my first series. So it's not something we have to do all the time, but if people are into, quote, age retardation or age management or whatever, we're all going to get older. But if yes. we want to do it in a healthy way, mm -hmm. this is a major tool. Wow. Yeah, we've been doing it since 92 and uh, 93, and it works.